The enchanting and iconic Dolly Parton, a truly magical singer, has gifted us with timeless melodies that have effortlessly withstood the test of decades, providing unparalleled comfort. While crafting joyous and uplifting songs, she has also navigated through challenging times with remarkable resilience, thriving against all odds, showing her unwavering, never-give-up mentality. Yet despite her extraordinary journey, she has recently revealed tragic stories that made her fans sad and concerned. What are these unrevealed stories? Join us as we reveal the whole truth about Dolly Parton's life. I look like a woman, but I think like a man. Dream to Dare. Dolly Parton's early years were not just challenging. They were filled with hardship that forged her resilient character. I'm serious about growing up in the mountains. It is yeah. a good way of life, and I think it really makes you appreciate things as you get out into the world, and uh, especially if you have good parents, which I did. Growing up in the humble confines of a one-room cabin nestled on the banks of the Little Pigeon River in Pittman Center, Tennessee, her formative experiences were far from ideal. However, she embraced this adversity, considering it an indispensable foundation that shaped her into the extraordinary person she is today. Amidst the squalor of her early dwelling, she later relocated to a farm atop the picturesque Locust Ridge, where her most treasured memories of youth unfolded. In this rustic haven, she dared to dream, cultivating aspirations that would eventually blossom into the legendary career we know today. Dolly Parton's childhood, though marked by poverty, transcended the typical narrative associated with such circumstances. Instead of succumbing to the potential pitfalls, her upbringing was adorned with richness, tightly woven with threads of love and contentment. It's true. We had, uh, we didn't have uh, much. We had, most people, as you know, have, you know, three rooms and a, and a bath. Right. We had four rooms and a path. And a couple of <laughs> Raised in the Church of God under the pastoral guidance of her grandfather, Jake Robert Owens, she steadfastly followed the straight and narrow path. Born to an indomitable father who, Despite his illiteracy, toiled relentlessly to provide for his family, Dolly's childhood was punctuated by the enchanting strains of ancient ballads. Despite struggling with poor health, her resilient mother managed the household, regaling her 12 children with captivating tales from Smoky Mountain folklore. Well, my daddy was a farmer, and I'm from a large family. In fact, there's 12 of us kids. 12? Six girls and six boys. The familial bonds were tight, each sibling serving as a stalwart protector of the others. In the face of palpable hardship, the Parton family clung to hope, fostering an optimism that would profoundly shape Dolly's outlook on life. Even during an interview with Parade in 2015, she revealed that it was only later in life that a busybody brought to her attention the true nature of her family's financial struggles. Well, I've seen it grow. I've seen it like go uh, from just a little dream to a bigger dream. The Locust Ridge cabin, the sprawling farm, and the enveloping forest land left an indelible mark on Dolly's creative spirit. Her 1970s hit, My Tennessee Mountain Home, draws inspiration from these surroundings, vividly painting the hues of her childhood memories. As you listen to her impactful country songs such as In the Good Old Days When Times Were Bad and Coat of Many Colors, you can't help but be transported into a world seen through her eyes a world teeming with warmth and emotion. She nostalgically recalls idyllic bathing in the river during summer and the simple joy of using just a bucket of water in winter. Of course, we were just uh, farm folks. We lived on a farm all my life. That means everybody works. We all worked because you have to. I think that's why people in the country have so many kids. You don't want to hire help. So <laughs> <laughs> Even the challenges, like bedwetting among siblings, are recollected with fondness portrayed as the only warmth they knew in the harsh winter. Parton's coat of many colors shows her ability to find hope amid adversity. In stark contrast to the biblical tale of Joseph's vibrant coat, Dolly's coat weaves a poignant story. With love and resourcefulness, her mother sewed together fabric scraps, creating a coat to shield her daughter from the biting cold. The song encapsulates her mother's knack for finding beauty in seemingly bleak conditions, emphasizing the joy derived from each carefully stitched detail, even in the face of bullying when she wore her coat of many colors. It recognizes her mother as the unsung hero who made it all possible. In a 2016 interview with Vogue, 
Dolly Parton expressed that, a coat of many colors ranks among her favorite songs, a piece she holds in high regard. Her journey from rag to riches is just one facet of her multifaceted appeal, showcasing a life rich in resilience, creativity, and an unwavering spirit that has elevated her to legendary status. Dolly Parton's Early Career Dolly Parton's incredible journey into music began when she showcased her enchanting voice in the church choir at the tender age of six. By age seven, she skillfully played a homemade guitar, a precious gift from her dedicated uncle Bill Owens, who played a pivotal role in kickstarting her remarkable music career. Even in her early years, Dolly demonstrated extraordinary musical talent, captivating audiences on local radio and TV programs in the heart of East Tennessee. At age 10, her star continued to rise as she graced the CA's Walker Show in Knoxville. Remarkably, by the age of 13, she not only recorded a song titled Puppy Love for a small Louisiana label, but also earned a coveted spot on the legendary Grand Ole Opry stage. In 1965, Dolly, alongside her supportive uncle Bill, secured a deal with Monument Records. Despite being initially marketed as a pop singer, her early singles, including I Wasted My Tears and What Do You Think About Lovin', failed to garner the anticipated attention. Undeterred by these initial setbacks, Dolly's resilient spirit and determination continued to shine. Interestingly, Dolly harbored a profound desire to transition into country music. However, Monument Records resisted this change, dismissing her unique and transcendent high soprano voice as incompatible with the genre that would eventually become her musical hallmark. Despite the industry's reluctance, Dolly Parton's unwavering passion and resilience paved the way for a remarkable and enduring career in music. Rise to Fame Despite numerous pushbacks, she finally catapulted into stardom with the sensational Happy Happy Birthday Baby soaring to number one on the pop charts. Unwilling to settle, she continued her relentless pursuit of musical passion. A pivotal moment in her career materialized when she co-wrote Put It Off Until Tomorrow with her uncle in 1966 for Bill Phillips, swinging open doors for her to wholeheartedly embrace her Southern passions and leave an indelible impact. Introducing Hello, I'm Dolly, her groundbreaking solo album that defied expectations and delivered unexpected success in 1967. This achievement was nothing short of astounding, considering Dolly's lack of popularity in the music industry at the time. However, this triumph wasn't merely coincidental. It strategically paved the way for even greater success, as history would soon reveal. Continuing her ascent into the limelight, she crossed paths with Porter Wagoner, an encounter that evolved into the opportunity to join Nashville's most prominent syndicated show. This substantial breakthrough served as a turning point propelling her status in the music industry to new heights, expanding her network, and inevitably boosting her net worth. Her musical journey, as intricately revealed by Stella Parton in her memoir, was vigilantly guarded by Bill Owens. Stella recounted Bill Owens actively discouraging her from pursuing a music career, firmly believing it could potentially hinder Dolly's trajectory. This anecdote underscores her family's unwavering commitment to her success, ensuring a path free from distractions and unhealthy competition. Setting out alone. Spending a remarkable seven years on Porter Wagoner's captivating variety show, where she initially garnered well-deserved recognition, she reached a juncture where she believed she had amassed sufficient success and acclaim to embark on her solo journey. However, despite the evident strides in her music career, she encountered significant challenges as a woman navigating a notably misogynistic music industry. In a riveting live interview on Larry King's program, she eloquently elucidated the rationale behind the amicable separation. She expressed a deep-seated sentiment, noting that she harbored no desire to perpetually exist as nothing more than somebody's girl singer throughout the entirety of her illustrious career. This bold decision marked a pivotal moment in her trajectory, showcasing not only her musical prowess, but also her determination to break free from limiting roles and stereotypes in the industry. Dolly's Ups and Downs Embarking on her solo journey, Dolly Parton's path was adorned with a breathtaking share of highs and lows. Even with the transition to her syndicated show after spending years on Porter Wagoner's show, one might have anticipated unmitigated success. 
However, the reality proved different as her show ran for only a single season in the 1970s, abruptly cut short. In a candid 2018 interview with Billboard, she openly acknowledged that, while she harbors no regrets about her chosen path, the show was, in essence, a mistake. This revelation adds a layer of depth to her narrative, portraying her honesty and self-awareness. Reflecting on the production, she described her state of mind as unhappy, vividly expressing how it deviated from her envisioned path, where she felt constrained from being her authentic self. Beyond the challenges of her TV show, she harbored mixed feelings about her earlier commercial music. In a revealing Rolling Stone interview, she admitted that, despite claiming credit for half the songs on her 1980 album, Nine to Five and Odd Jobs, she didn't particularly favor her recent albums, despite their undeniable impact on her career. Speculation arose, suggesting she may have compromised her artistic integrity, but Dolly held a different perspective, asserting that she was diligently working toward the right goals in the industry. As if to substantiate her stance, the song, Nine to Five Inches, and the movie of the same name, featuring Dolly Parton alongside Lily Tomlin and Jane Fonda, became an unparalleled hit. This success bestowed upon her an inexplicable freedom and the creative control she had always craved, enabling her to craft music on her terms and fully express herself in her work. Dollywood's accident, fueled by profound experiences in Hollywood, the indomitable Dolly Parton launched an awe-inspiring initiative in 1986, metamorphosing a Tennessee theme park into the illustrious Dollywood, a Smoky Mountain extravaganza complete with a replica of the Locust Ridge Cabin, her childhood haven. Dollywood, now the 24 the most popular theme park in the United States, attracts a staggering 3 million visitors annually, earning accolades as the largest ticketed attraction in Tennessee and standing proudly as one of the region's largest employers, as acclaimed on its website. This visionary project, synonymous with triumph, hasn't been immune to challenges. In its nascent stages, particularly on the opening day of the Thunder Express roller coaster in 1989, a brake malfunction resulted in 18 reported injuries, casting a shadow over the park's grand debut. These early setbacks didn't dampen Dolly's determination. The ensuing years witnessed a series of unfortunate incidents, including a woman falling from a moving train car in 2004. Yet park officials absolved Dollywood of accountability, asserting that it was an isolated incident. Safety concerns intensified, leading to the removal of the Timber Tower in 2007, after a malfunction left 44 riders stranded for hours until a successful rescue mission ensued. In 2015, TMZ reported a woman suing Dollywood for brain damage from a fall, sparking a lengthy legal battle that eventually found resolution out of court. In 2018, Dollywood faced further adversity as a mother of two sought $2 million in damages for a spinal injury sustained at the water park. A themed decoration reportedly fell, injuring three people and leading to hospitalization, as reported by WG. Despite being a public figure and co-owner of Dollywood, Dolly Parton remained steadfast in her commitment to visitor safety. Unfazed by the incidents, she stayed informed and took appropriate action, exemplifying her unwavering consideration for every park visitor as an extended member of her family. Remarkably, Dollywood not only weathered these challenges but continued to thrive, attracting more visitors from across the country, testifying to the enduring allure and resilience of Dolly Parton's visionary theme park. Family Crisis One thing that has been constant in Dolly Parton's life is losses and career setbacks. These challenges have been notable bearing consequences that took the grace of strong backing such as her family to pull through. In 2017, her family was hit, facing an unbearable loss. The tragic loss of her niece, Tivor Parton, at the young age of 36, after experiencing a series of personal struggles including addiction and losing custody of her son. It came to light before her passing that Tivor struggled with drug addiction, and her family did their best to support her in overcoming this challenge having placed her on a rehabilitation program and covered the substantial cost which amounted to $25,000. In a troubling incident in 2006, she was arrested for assaulting her boyfriend's sick mother in a desperate bid to get money for drugs. Interestingly, the Sevierville police somehow lost the record of this incident, 
adding an element of mystery to the situation. The sudden death of Trevor was a deeply felt loss for the Parton family, and despite their grief, the family kept the details of her death private, particularly Dolly Parton, who refrained from making any public comments about her niece's death. Tivor's obituary is at the same cemetery where Floyd Parton was buried, providing very few details. It only mentions that Tivor was survived by her son, parents, sister, and several aunts, uncles, and cousins, asking that the public respect the family's desire for privacy during their difficult time. Devastating losses. Dolly Parton's life has been a barrage of irreparable losses, experiencing the pain of losing several family members over the years, leaving them with permanent scars. At the tender age of nine, Dolly came to know the pain of death. Her younger brother Larry passed away four days after his birth. In an interview with TV critics, reflecting on the difficulties growing up, she talks about the heartaches they went through and insists it has made them who and what they are. However, that wasn't the end. In December 2018, the Parton's family was yet again hit with the passing of another brother, Floyd Parton, at the age of 61. Floyd was a man with versatile talents and wide knowledge of many things. He is buried at Tennessee's Atchley Funeral Home. All through his lifetime, the bond he shared with Dolly was special, and this could be felt in whatever they did together. They collaborated on most of Dolly's number one hit songs, the 1991 track Rockin' Years, featuring Ricky Van Shelton, and the 1978 song Nickels and Dimes from Dolly Parton's Heartbreaker LP. Her family, known for always keeping their affairs private, kept mute about the loss, except for a joint statement in 2018 paying tribute to Floyd. They described Floyd's life as one filled with love and the creation of beautiful songs. During his funeral, the family lovingly sang a song dear to him, Rockin' Years to bid him farewell. Amongst her many losses was the passing of her mother. In 2003, she talked about the effect the death had on her. She shared that close to six months after the passing of her mother, she couldn't perform her song Coat of Many Colors as she would break into tears. These losses have certainly shaped and influenced her life and career, adding a layer of depth to her artistry and her enduring connection to her family. The Death of Porter Wagoner Aside from the death of family members, Dolly Parton has experienced the passing of so many colleagues in the industry, including that of country singer Porter Wagoner, who played an important role in advancing her music career. They had a professional relationship that was significant, and despite their split, she wrote the iconic song I Will Always Love You in 1973 as a tribute to him. This emotion-evoking song became even more well-known when Whitney Houston recorded it again for the Bodyguard movie soundtrack. Before his tragic loss from lung cancer in 2007, they reconciled. Parton expresses that his impact on her life will always be reflected through her and her music. Further expressing her love for him was the opportunity to sing to Wagoner on his deathbed, giving him a proper and heartfelt farewell. More losses. In 2017, Dolly Parton experienced yet another tragic loss at the death of her longtime manager, Don Warden. They had a successful working relationship that lasted almost 50 years. To Parton, he was more than just a manager. He was like a father, a brother, a partner, and one of her closest friends. She has been very vocal about her deep love and gratitude for him, acknowledging the undeniable influence he had on both her life and career. In 2020, the death of country singer Kenny Rogers was another tragic blow to Dolly Parton. They collaborated on hits like Islands in the Stream, and during that time they created a special bond. She shared her grief on Facebook where she stated that a considerable part of her heart was gone with his death, emphasizing the profound relationship between them both through their music and friendship. Dark Times Experiencing all of these losses and setbacks, one could expect a breakdown at some point, so it was no wonder in 2017 she opened up about the dark times of her life. This iconic country singer known for her ever-present smile, glamorous appearance, hopeful aura, and sunny disposition revealed the extremely troubling times she experienced personally in her interview collection titled Dolly on Dolly. Dolly faced tough times due to the emotional challenge of the peculiarities of her open marriage. 
This personal struggle deeply affected her mental and emotional well-being. Even to the point of battling with suicidal thoughts, and for six months, she woke up every morning feeling emotionally numb. However, Dolly wasn't only dealing with the emotional challenges in her personal life during that period. She was also handling family drama, coping with health issues, and recovering from what she described as a nightmare experience while filming the movie, The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas. As Dolly's life watched her life spiral out of control, she took a rather risky coping mechanism to get through the times. She resorted to binge eating and even canceled her scheduled tour engagements, going even deeper into a dark depression where she seriously considered suicide. In these dark times, Dolly went through a life-changing moment. She recalls a particular day, overwhelmed with desperation all by herself at home, she considered using a handgun to end it all. At that moment, her faithful dog, Popeye, who probably sensed something was amiss, searched for her. The sound of Popeye's paws tapping jolted her awake, back to reality. This profound moment not only rescued her from that dark moment, but also saved her life. She attributes Popeye's appearance at that moment to a divine intervention, a sign that her life held significance and purpose. She said it was God's way of bringing me to my knees long enough to pray. Childless Marriage Dolly Parton and her husband Carl Dean have had a strong and lasting marriage since they got married in 1966, but never had any children together. During an interview on Larry King Live in 2003, she shared that she did have the desire to have children when they first met. However, parenthood never became a reality for them as during the early stages of their relationship, they were very busy with the responsibilities of their careers and family. They took on the responsibility of raising five of Dolly's siblings. They made provisions available to them, supported them, and ensured they got qualitative education. To them, commitment to family became their top priority. Due to health issues, plans to start a family in 1982 were postponed. Dolly Parton underwent an urgent partial hysterectomy as she struggled with endometriosis, as reported by the Huffington Post. This medical procedure bore the consequence of making her unable to ever have children, a realization that deeply saddened her and led to a profound and painful period of depression. In a later revelation, she opened up about her emotional battles, acknowledging to the Globe via the Irish Examiner that it was an extraordinarily challenging time for her. She admitted that every day she wished she had the nerve to kill myself. While Dolly and Carl contemplate the idea of adoption, she also struggles with doubts about being a good parent. She admitted that her dedication to her career could affect her wholeheartedly devoting herself to parenthood. She believes that God has a plan for her, and maybe not having children of her own was a part of that plan. Philanthropic life. Dolly Parton's generosity truly stands out, especially in her dedication to childhood literacy through the Imagination Library program. In 1995, Dolly started the Imagination Library as a heartfelt tribute to her father, Robert Lee, who couldn't read or write but was a smart and hardworking provider for the family. Stella, Dolly's sister, shared a touching story in her memoir about their father's resourcefulness during Dolly's birth, when they couldn't afford hospital expenses. Dolly sees her work with the Imagination Library as a way to positively impact many children's lives much like her father did for their family. Dolly believes not having biological children might be part of a bigger plan, allowing her to care for all children as if they were her own. The Imagination Library is a wonderful program that sends a new book every month to children from birth to age five, encouraging a love for reading and learning. In 2018, the Library of Congress recognized Dolly's efforts by honoring her for sending out the 100 millionth book through the Imagination Library. This recognition highlights Dolly's commitment to helping children around the world and making a positive difference. Dolly Parton's philanthropic work extends to wildfire relief efforts. In 2016, the Great Smoky Mountains, a region close to her heart, was ravaged by wildfires. Dolly promptly organized the My People Fund to provide financial assistance to the victims. Her foundation distributed $1,000 per month for six months to families affected by the disaster, demonstrating her dedication to her community in times of crisis. Thank you for watching.
and click on your screen for more amazing videos. See you there.